Hi there, my name is Mr. Code and in this video we're going to talk about how to prove time complexities. So before I'm going into the details, let me give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, of course, I'm going to explain how to prove time complexities. And after that, I'm going to give an example of a proof so that you directly see how the conditions must be applied for a proof. And finally, I will give an example of a counterexample. More about that later on. So let's start with explaining how to prove time complexities. And I will um, just base the proof on the definition of the big O. So uh, given functions fn and gn, then fn is OGN if it holds that there are positive constants c and n0 such that fn is smaller or equal to c times gn for n greater or equal to n0. This might sound a little abstract for now, um, but let's just directly start with an example so that it becomes clear, hopefully. So this is an example. Imagine that fn is equal to n plus 7 and gn is n. Now, please prove that fn is big O gn. And if you want to do this yourself first, please pause the video, um, give it a try, give it a shot, and press play again uh, when you're done. So for now, I will directly jump into the solution. So this is the solution. What has to be proved is that n plus 7 is O n. And the condition to be checked is for fn and gn, it holds that n plus 7 is O n. If there are positive constants c and n0 such that n plus 7 is smaller or equal to c times n for n greater or equal to n0. So what I did was just I, I took this um, condition and I filled it in. That's it. So we have the statement that n plus 7 is smaller or equal to cn. And we can rewrite this uh, statement so that it becomes easier to decide whether there is a positive constant c in n0 that uh, meets these conditions. So let's rewrite it. So if we subtract n from cn, uh, we get the following. And I turned around the statement just to make it easier for us. Um, and when you uh, divide 7 by c minus 1, and of course c minus 1 times n by c minus 1, you get n is greater or equal to 7 divided by c minus 1. And from this we can d directly pick a c and an n0. So let's for example take c is 2 and n0 is 7. These are just two very simple examples. And it directly uh, shows us that there are two positive constants, cn and n0, such that n plus 7 is smaller or equal to cn, for n is greater or equal to n0. Because these constants are, of course, uh, positive. So because we found an example in which there are two positive constants, um, there exists as, as at least one uh, solution for which it holds and that's all we had to prove to make this condition true so because this condition holds we can conclude that n plus 7 is o n and that's what we had to prove so q e d um, so that was just an example of a proof now let's have a look at an example of a counterexample so imagine that fn is equal to n squared and gn is n. Now show that fn is not big O gn. This is of course very obvious uh, because, well, we know that n is not, n squared is not O n. Um, but if you want to try it first, give it a shot. I'll just continue with the solution. So this is the solution. 
what has to be shown is that n square is not O n. And again, we're going to fill in the condition. So this is the condition for f n and g, and it holds that n squared is O n if there are positive constants c and n zero such that n squared is smaller or equal to c n for an n greater or equal to n zero. And this condition should be false to show what we have to show. Um, let's again rewrite this statement. So um, we can divide simply by n. Um, of course, we cannot directly do that without state, stating this condition. So n shouldn't be equal to zero. And then we get n should be smaller or equal to c. Hmm, what does that mean? n is of course still a variable, and c should be a constant. So the above inequality cannot be satisfied, since c must be a constant. So the condition does not hold, because this part does not hold. So because the condition does not hold, n squared is not O n. And this is what we had to show. Okay, so that was it. Um, I So what we did in this video was uh, I explained how you should prove time complexities and I give you an example of, uh, of a proof and an example of a counterexample. So that was it. Um, if you thought this video was useful, please make sure to hit the thumbs up to give it a like. If you have any questions, please use the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, please make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.